Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. Welcome to the channel and to our sixth video in the introductory R series. In this video and the next two, we're going to cover some programming features of R that will be familiar if you've programmed before in a traditional language such as Python, C, or Java. Some of these features might also be familiar if you've done a little work with spreadsheet packages such as Excel. These features will be useful in writing scripts and transforming data. We're going to begin with two important ideas from programming, flow of control and program state. You've already seen several scripts in prior videos, and you probably intuitively understood that the lines of code in the script would execute from the top of the file to the bottom. This flow of control, top to bottom in a script, is called sequential flow of control, and it is the default. We always start that way and return to that way after following a different flow of control through its conclusion. In our scripts, the commands we wrote always transformed the program state. In R, the program state is all of our defined variables and what data they reference. And in R Studio, we can always see our program state or workspace in the environment pane. When we execute a command to read a table, we then see the table appear in the environment pane. Once we have the table defined as part of the program state, we can change the column names or extract rows into a new table or add a column, and we'll see the results of each command in the environment pane. Each line of a script transforms what we have in the workspace and moves our analysis closer to its conclusion. There are times when we don't want to execute every command, however, or times when we don't want to apply a command to every row of a data frame, for example. Sometimes we'll want to use a branching structure, an if statement, so we can choose which lines execute or which rows to apply a command to. Let's begin with the basics of an if statement. The syntax of an if statement in R resembles C or Java. I have a script here from video two, columns practice in R, which I've renamed to if statements.r. In this script, we read in our AI dataset. I'm going to delete all of the code after we read the dataset in and view it. When we read the dataset in, we simplify the column names. And we'll just pick one value from the dataset to look at to demonstrate if, and then we'll do something more interesting. I'll write num is assigned the value of AI invest sub one comma four. That will be the value for AI invest column four for the first record. Let me run the script so we can see our data frame and our variable num in the workspace in the environment pane. Okay, and there's the data frame and num. And if I open up the little arrow next to num, I can see it's a big number, around 400 million. Let's print a message if that value is greater than 1 billion. And let's print a different message if that value is less than or equal to 1 billion. So I'll write a comment, print a message if num is greater than 1 billion and a different message otherwise. And then the code if lowercase if and then a condition in parentheses. This is what we're testing to determine which code will execute. It has to be a test of something that already exists in the program state or workspace, so a defined variable. We created a variable to test num. And so inside parentheses, num greater than 1 billion. The greater than symbol allows us to write a condition that will evaluate to true if the value or expression on the left is greater than the value or expression on the right and false if the value on the left is less than or equal to the value or expression on the right. Now we type in open curly brace and the code we write next is the true branch, the code that will execute if our condition evaluated to true. We typically put that on the next line indented and it can be more than one line of code, more than one command, but we're just going to have one command print the value is greater than 1 billion and then a close curly brace, which ends the true branch code. A false branch isn't required. Maybe we don't want to do anything if the condition evaluates to false. 
But if we do want to do something, we write else and then an open curly brace and we'll print the value is not greater than 1 billion. And then close curly brace. The open and close curly braces enclose our blocks of code that will or will not execute depending on how the condition evaluates. Let's run our script. You can see it printed the value is not greater than 1 billion, which we knew to be true. So one branch executed, the branch after the else, because the condition evaluated to false. The branch after the if and condition was skipped because the condition did not evaluate to true. Let's copy this code, starting with our assignment to num, and we'll assign a different value to num, one that is greater than 1 billion. We can see that the value in column 4 on line 7 is more than 3 billion. So we'll assign num equals AI invest sub 7 comma 4. And I'll just select this last part of the script and run it with control enter. And this time it prints the value is greater than 1 billion because num is now holding the value from row 7 over 3 billion. Now, you have actually already seen me use an if statement before, but I didn't discuss it. I just stuck it in my script in the last video. I wrote, if not require reader, install.packages reader. This is some code that checks if a package is already installed and installs it if it isn't. The require function will attempt to load in a package that is installed, just like library, but unlike library, require will return false if the package is not installed. The exclamation point in front of require means not, which negates whatever it's in front of. So not true is false and not false is true. If reader isn't installed, then require reader returns false. So not require reader would evaluate to true and install.packages reader would execute. And if it is installed, then require reader returns true, and not require reader returns false, and the install code doesn't execute. This is one of those cases where we don't want to do anything if the condition is false. The package is already installed, and we don't need to do anything. But if it isn't installed, we want to install it. Now, there could be curly braces around the install.packages line, and it could be on the line below the if condition, but it's all on one line in this case without the curly braces. You can get away with skipping the curly braces if you have only one conditional line of code. We could have done the same earlier, but it's always a good habit to put the curly braces in in case you do want to add more code later. The if not require library code is a common line of code that is usually written the way I have it here. So it should be easily understood by any experienced R programmer reading the script. What's another case in which we might want to use an if statement? In some data sets collected over years, the attributes of the data, the columns in a tidy table, might be different. Maybe the columns have different names, or maybe there are additional or missing columns. As an example, I've extracted out two years of our AI data, 2020 and 2021. I've named those files AI data underscore 2020.csv and AI data underscore 2021.csv. Now I'm going to write some code to load each of those in and view them, just the same as the code I used above to load in AI invest, but without changing the column names. I'll call the data frames AI underscore 2020 and AI underscore 2021. Okay, and let's execute that and take a look at those two tables. Notice that one has that empty code column and the other doesn't. Let's say we want to load in several files of data from different years and put them all into one data frame using rbind, but they have different columns. 
we need them to have the same columns in the same order. We might use an if statement to determine what columns are present and then reduce the tables to a specific set of columns. Remember, we can get the column names from a data frame using call names, which returns a character vector of the column names. And we can check for a value in a vector using the in operator. That's percent in percent, no spaces. In the console, I can write code percent in percent call names AI underscore 2020. And R tells me false. And I can write code in call names AI 2021. And R tells me true. To remove the column, I could write after I load each table in, if code in call names AI 2020, open curly brace, AI 2020 is assigned the value of AI 2020, open bracket, comma, meaning select all rows, and then minus two, the index of the code column, and then close curly brace. There's no need here for an else. We just want to remove the column if it's there. And I'll copy that and paste it after we read in AI 2021 as well. And now both tables will be read in and the code column will be removed if present. Now you might be thinking, that's not general enough. How do we know the code column is column two? And good for you if you thought that. I wanted to focus on just the if statement, but briefly, let's figure out what column it's in. We know that call names returns a vector of character data, the column names of the data frame. If code is in there, it has an index. So we'll want to get its index, and we can do that with the which command. If we type question mark which at the console, we can see the help for which, and it says, give the true indices of a logical object, allowing for array indices. And let's go look at some of the examples at the bottom. This first example is interesting. Which letters equals R? If I type letters at the console, it appears to be a constant that is a set of uppercase letters in the Roman alphabet. And if I type at the console, which letters equals equals R, it tells me 18, the index of R in that array. That appears to be what we want. So let's amend our code. Inside the curly braces, I'll write i, i is a common variable name for an index. i is assigned the value of which call names ai2020 equals equals code. And then instead of negative two, I'll have, or minus two, I'll have minus i. Now we're only in the if statement if code is in call names. So if it wasn't there, we're not going to be asking which to give us its index. Let's talk briefly about the operators you can use to write logical expressions. So far we've seen greater than, equal to, which is written as two equal signs, and we've also used in. What you put after the keyword if in parentheses has to evaluate to true or false. We can use relational operators, operators that compare numbers, to create expressions that evaluate to true or false, like the greater than symbol. This is R's documentation on writing logical vectors. It says the logical operators are less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to for exact equality, and not equal to for inequality. In addition, if C1 and C2 are logical expressions, then C1 and C2 is their intersection, and C1 or C2 is their union, or, and not C1 is the negation of C1. These will be familiar to you if you've programmed in a traditional language, except that you might expect the words and, or, and not, or you might expect and to be a double ampersand and or to be a double bar. If you're not familiar with programming, you only have to get used to the symbols. Less than and greater than are the usual symbols, but for testing less than or equal to, 
and greater than or equal to, we use the less than sign immediately followed by the equal sign, no space, for less than or equal to, and the greater than sign immediately followed by the equal sign, no space, for greater than or equal to. To test for equality, it's a double equal sign, no space, and to test for inequality, it's an exclamation point followed by an equal sign, no space between. If we want to write a more complex expression, we can write an expression with and or or. An expression with and, the single ampersand, will evaluate to true when the expressions on each side evaluate to true. And in all other cases, an and evaluates to false. An or evaluates to false when the expressions on each side evaluate to false. And in all other cases, and or evaluates to true. These are pretty close to how we use and and or in natural language. The not operator, the exclamation point, negates the logical expression that you put it in front of. R has a shortcut version of the if-else that we can use to return a vector of logical results. If you're familiar with the ternary if operator in programming languages, it's like that, but as with many operations in R, the result is going to be a vector. Let's apply the ternary operator of the if-else that we wrote before, comparing a value to 1 billion, to the entire AI Invest data frame. Hopefully you will see how enormously useful this can be. I'll write a comment first, demonstrate the greater than 1 billion expression on the entire AI Invest data frame using the ternary if-else operator. And then I'll write over billion is assigned the value of if-else open paren, if-else is all one word, and now I put three things in the parentheses separated by commas. I put the conditional expression that will evaluate to true or false, comma, and then I put what I want this expression to evaluate to if that's true, comma, and then what I want this expression to evaluate to if that's false. So for our expression, we're going to write AI invest sub four, that's the entire fourth column, the invest column is greater than one billion. And then we'll just put the character literals big and small as the result. Let's execute this and let's examine over billion. You can see it's a vector of the words big and small. And recall that we know the value in row one was less than one billion and the value in row seven was greater. So let's confirm that it returned small for row one and big for row seven. And yes, one is small and seven is big. So what? Well, I could use this to add an extra column to the data frame, for example. I'll write AI invest categorized is assigned the value of AI invest to copy the data frame to a new data frame. And then AI invest categorized square bracket comma size close square bracket is assigned the value of and then I'll just copy our if-else expression. And I'll execute those lines. And now if we examine AI invest categorized, we can see it has an additional column called size with big or small as the value. So that is an introduction to writing conditional expressions in R. The code, as always, will be uploaded to my GitHub repository with a link in the description. I hope you found this helpful. I suggest you practice with this by downloading this data and extracting values to compare using some of the operators that we didn't practice with, and possibly adding some columns using if-else and your own criteria. Have fun with it.